Hi everybody, it's Sarah. Um, it's Tuesday. It's pancake day. I don't know the date. Um, but I'm going to try and hopefully help people get past the info um, on the coat. Um, it's collar, the binding. So I'm just going to try and work through that with you. Um, it, we might have to do this in two parts. My videoing skills are zero. Um, so I've got to the stage where in the book um, I've put the back pleat in, I've done the pocket detail on the front and I've attached the sleeves in. So you've got a nice flat shape to work with there and hopefully you've decorated it with some top stitching. I'm getting hold of the collar which I've put together and I've just sewn around the outside edges. You're bound to have one side which is better than the other and at this point I would put the better side facing upwards thank you very much um that's a cup of coffee being delivered um so what you need to do now so we've got the coat itself facing upwards we've got the collar facing upwards and I've got a central back notch which I can just pin in to match the center back pleat and you're then looking for the collar finishing point, the end of it, to match up with the notch that's there at the front. So I'm going to get those into position first on both sides. So what you're really looking to do is you're looking to straighten out the curved neck edge um, to match alongside the, the straight edge of the collar. And if you need to put some little notches in to make that easier to do, um, that's what I would do with fabric, certainly. But with felt, it stretches, it gives, it's forgiving. Um, so I'm just able to straighten everything out like that. I'm going to put a couple of additional pins in um, along the edge to keep it in place. And then if you wanted at this stage, you could tack it in place. Um, if you are in doubt, if you're a beginner, just spending the time tacking before you move to the next stage is really quite important. If you are a more experienced sewer, you'll, you'll know yourself what stages you can skip. So I'm just making sure that the edges match on that. And I'm gonna run along with a stay stitch on my machine just to, to hold that in place. So when I'm doing a stay stitch, I'm lengthening the stitch slightly. So I've got it, I'd normally sew with a stitch of about four, uh, sorry, about 2.75 to three. Um, and for this, I'm lengthening it to four. So I'm working on a Husqvarna Viking. Uh, is probably my the best of my machines and I'm just going to sew along this edge um, at a depth of just under half a centimeter but if I do need to take the stitching out later I can because it's a nice long stitch I've got my pins perpendicular or at right angles to the way that I sew so that I can just so over them rather than having to remove them. So I've got that in place now. My collar is, is secure. I can take my pins out. Um, and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put my facings in place. So I've got two facing pieces also made out of felt. If for whatever reason you were short of felt, you could probably do this bit with fabric. So what you're looking at doing is you're looking at matching up those front edges. So you'll know that it's a front edge because it's the lower edge. You've got a little notch to help you match there as well. So I'm gonna put a pin in my notch and I'm gonna come down the front edge. Felt doesn't need as much pinning as some of the fabrics because it's quite grippy. It's got a fairly rough surface. So uh, it will hold itself together. And if I was doing this for uh, just myself, I'd probably just wing it and, and put it through. Um, and then, so I've pinned that and I've pinned right up so that the, um, the edge of the facing is sitting over the collar. So the collar is starting to be sandwiched in between. 
I'm then going to do the same on the other side. So if you were working with this and it happened to have a right and a wrong side to the fabric, we would have the main body of the coat with the right side up, the collar with the right side up, and then the facing with the right side going downwards so that it's what's regarded as being right sides together. Okay, so I've pinned that in place. And then the next stage is maybe the one that people aren't used to. So we're gonna use a piece of bias binding that, um, I wondered why I had some bias binding sitting on my table this morning. I've taken it back to the shop. I couldn't remember why I've done it anyway. So a piece of two and a half inch wide bias binding that we've asked you to trim down. Um, to be half of its width. So it was once like this, but we've um, taken about seven and a half inches off and then I've trimmed down through the middle. If you've got enough bias binding to not have to do that, um, I would definitely take off one folded edge and work with it and then you can always trim down later. So you're going to work from beyond where the facing um, finishes. So I'm just going to put it so that the cut edge, the edge that we was the middle of the bias binding, is now going to match up with the neck edge, okay? So we're creating more layers. And I'm gonna bring the bias binding all the way along. Um, and that will mean that your folded edge is kind of sitting down near the collar. Well, that's not important that it matches or anything but for the next stage where you're going to be folding it over, having that pressed edge in place makes it easy to, to sew the whole thing down. And then because I've cut more than it said it needed, um, I'm just gonna trim that off. But it is important that you allow some of the bias to, um, to go beyond where the facing is. That's a big nasty pin. Um, whilst I'm doing this, I would like to say thank you to everybody for all the amazing comments that we've had on the blog post from um, Saturday night. It's been really interesting to read what everybody's up to and just how creative you all are. Um, thank you for saying you don't know how I have time to sew, but to be honest, when I do decide I'm going to sew, it's virtually the only thing that I do. Um, so I just had a weekend of doing it. It was really nice and I suppose it's what I regard as being my relaxation time, whereas other people might do other things. So I've got everything pinned around. You can see the main body of the coat here with the sleeve sticking out. Um, I've got the collar going on under here. Then I've put the facings on and then I've put the bias binding on the top. So I'm gonna start at the bottom edge of one of the fronts to sew the face into the lining. I'm gonna use a half centimeter seam allowance and you can see that my machine just drops down automatically when I put the foot on. So I'm just gonna do a bit of reversing. I'm using a half centimeter seam allowance um, and I'm gonna use the needle down function as well. If you've got a needle down function, let's see if I can get it on. It's really helpful for going around curves. I'd recommend if you're looking for a machine to have the needle down function. You can see here as I'm going around the curve, as soon as I stop, the machine stops and it lifts the presser foot slightly. So you can just do one stitch at a time and just turn and it makes it super easy. As you're coming up to the bias, just make sure that the, um, that the facing does, the, bias doesn't fold back on itself. I'm just using my unpicker there um, to go over it. And then I'm just racing away here with my collar. I probably shouldn't be, shouldn't have my pins in, but anyway, never mind. So I'm going through all the layers and then as I approach a cornered area again, I'm going to slow down, turn as I need to and then head down to the bottom edge. Reversing at the bottom of the other. Okay, so once I've done that, I can pull everything out. I can take my pins away.
Um, and at this point, I probably would look to just trim down um, the corner points slightly, maybe taking those down to one and a half mil, just to get rid of the bulk. Um, and I'd probably go along the back seam here as well, just to take off some of the extra where there's, you know, layers of seam allowance. Okay. Then what you can do is you can push everything through. And you'll see that as you push everything through, um, just spend a bit of time getting that soft corner at the fr front of the coat out and nice that you've then got everything in the right order on your collar. When you've done that, it's probably best to finger press the um, seam allowance downwards slightly. And then you can turn the bias binding uh, folded edge back on itself um, using the, the pre-folded edge. And you'll be able to pin through that And it creates a really nice, tidy finish on the inside of a coat. So it looks like it's a little professionally tailored garment. And then that can just be hand sewn in place with a, a whip stitch to keep that in place. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, but then what you can do, I think we then, what we say you can do, oh, we don't get to the top stitching yet. So let's move on from that. We'll leave that the way that it is. We're going to um, get the sleeves together in place. So fold the garment down so that you've got your sleeve sticking out on either side. Uh, you've got right sides together here. And we're just going to... Pin, let's behave well. Pin matching the, the, oh no, that's not pin. That's not pin yet because I've got to put the little sleeve tabs on. So my sleeve tabs, I want to run from the front upwards. So I'm going to estimate where they go. Um, so I'm putting them on the front of the sleeve and I just pin those in place. I'll do the same on the other side if I can find the other sleeve tab, which seems to have gone missing um okay well maybe just for the purpose of this one have a sleeve tab on one side and a not sleeve tabbed one on the other side i can always come back and amend it so make sure that your um under arm seams match and go down the body to make sure that the hems match if you find that the hems are slightly uneven, you can always trim up the, the hems afterwards. Something may have shifted and, and moved as you're doing it. So I'm just going to put those through the machine. I'm going to use a half centimetre seam allowance. Um, when I get to the point where the um, arm sleeve, arm seams are, um, that's where you needle down and you just pivot to come down with a half centimetre on the side seam. And I can see I'm slightly out on my, um, my hem at the bottom there. I'm going to do the same with the other one. Having you, if, When you're doing it, you're going to be doing it with a little tab in. Um, so I'm just going to put the... So up the other sleeve seam. Felt such an easy fabric to work with because it doesn't have the grain, because it's so movable and forgiving. Um, it's a perfect practice for your own dressmaking skills. I've pressed my felt here. If you feel your felt is bulky, you can always press it and it will just flatten it out and make it a little bit thinner. Um, so I've turned, I've done my 
side seams. I'm going to just snip into those corners without going too far in, um, just to make it a little bit easier to turn through uh, when I do get to the point of turning through. If you find that you've just got slightly uneven hems, you can always um, take off the difference between them. So I'm just leveling that up because what I'm going to need do next is I'm going to put the, um, the bias on the hem, hopefully without forgetting to have done anything else. So um, what you're going to need to do is turn the coat to be right sides upwards, fold the facing back on itself at the front. Um, so I'm going to fold that back on itself there. And I'm going to fold it back on itself here. This colour, by the way, is called Charming Coral. Um, it's a really fresh colour. Um, probably not with the best bias binding choice, but anyway. So here I'm going to use um, the full width of the bias binding. I'm just going to cut off a random amount here. Um, if you don't have bias binding to hand, you can always cut a strip of fabric. Bias binding is used to, um, you know, to cope with going around curves, but with this it's fairly straight, so you could just use a, a strip of fabric to create the, the lining. So I'm just overlapping the bias binding. So we've got coat right sides up, facing is going downwards. The bias binding is now going downwards, so it's right sides together. Overlap by about a centimetre. And then you can come all the way along. My This bias binding here has got a slightly deeper edge turning than your average normal bias binding. I don't know why different manufacturers will do different things. But I, what I probably will do is I'll just work with the folded line that they have offered me. So I'm going to sew in that valley. Um, I'm making sure that my side seams are pressing towards the back um, because that's how you do it if you were working with a, a real garment. And I'm just gonna, I've just chopped the bias off so that it's overlapping by about a centimeter. And then when I've got that in plinned in place, I'm gonna sew, if you were sewing with a normal bias binding, you'd be using a half a center, but this one looks a little bit deeper. So I'm just gonna sew right from the stitching that I did on that seam there. Um, I'm gonna make sure that the bias doesn't fold over just by lifting my presser foot. And then I'm gonna follow the fold, the crease that was in the bias binding all the way along. And then I'm gonna carry on at the same depth to the other um, edge of the front. Okay, let's lift that out. And then when I've pulled that out, take my pins out, I can trim off those corners um, on the coat to get rid of the bulk. And then I'm gonna push that corner through here and here. Make, just gently using the scissors to to tease those corners out so they're nice and crisp. And then I can finger press or press with an iron. Um, I would probably, if I was doing it with an iron here, um, I would use an iron because the ironing something within the making processes is, is as important as having a sewing machine. Um, it's absolutely vital to your preparation and it's vital to your finishing. So I'm just pinning the bias in place. And I think we say in the book to hand finish that. It'll be important for you to just sew down this facing here with a, like a little slip stitch or something to then come along to invisibly sew that hem in place. You'll be able to turn your sleeves out, which I can do probably now. Get a pair of scissors. 
push those through. That's the one without the tab on it. You'll be seeing that one at a show soon, probably. Everything that I do seems to be fairly unfinished because I'm always in a rush. And then when that's through, you can give everything a really good press. And you can, see, oh, that's what I've forgotten to do. I forgot to sew up the um, sleeve hems before we got to that point, but that's a good learning point. There's no way you could sew, sew up the sleeve hems at this point because it's just too narrow. So you do that before um, you sew up the side seams. So you give everything like this around here, really good press, you've sewn your collar down. And then I think what you do from memory is you are edge stitching around here um, to give it a really crisp finish. And then you can tackle your buttonholes. Um, we'll have to have a look at buttonholes another day. We're gonna get a selection of machines together to be able to show you the best way of coping with the buttonholes. So that's hopefully um, useful to you. Um, you'll have to let me know if it's not, we'll have to refilm it. Um, so that's super, thank you very much.